This film will look at some further objections required by the specification that use Darwinism as a challenge to the idea of design. We will consider Charles Darwin's ideas and also those of Richard Dawkins. It is worthwhile noting that Darwin himself did not aim to challenge the teleological argument. His concern was not about such arguments. He was originally a Christian, but what caused him to reject his faith in the end was nothing to do with his evolutionary theories. Instead, it was due to the death of his daughter. In fact, he felt that it seemed likely to him that there was a God, but that minds evolved from such simple organisms could not be trusted to come to such grand conclusions. In his book, Darwin demonstrates that there can be a mechanical explanation for the existence of complex life on the Earth. This can, in part, be attributed to chance through a process known as random variation. However, in addition to this, it can be attributed to a process called natural selection. Other scholars have coined the phrase survival of the fittest to characterise this process. This is known as the process of evolution. Natural selection is the process whereby features that are beneficial for survival and therefore reproduction are likely to be passed on, whereas those not advantageous to survival tend to die out. We can use the example from school biology lessons of the moth during the Industrial Revolution. During this time, trees turned black as a result of pollution. As a result, lighter moths were no longer well camouflaged and so were easily targeted by predators. These moths then were not well adapted to their new environment and so they couldn't survive. Those who by chance were darker in colour and therefore were well camouflaged were able to survive and as a result they could then pass on their genes to offspring. As the pollution problem lifted, the same effect could be seen as the colour of the gene trees changed again. The ability of a species to adapt to a changing environment is the key to success of that species. Random variation is another feature of evolutionary theory explored by Darwin in that he pointed out how random mutations could accelerate the process of development when it helped survival. A creature which by chance has a characteristic of, say, being slightly taller and thus able to access food sources unavailable to other shorter creatures, is more likely to survive when food is scarce and therefore more likely to pass on that characteristic to other offspring. Human evolution operates in just this way. Humans have evolved via these methods from lower life forms into the complex creatures that we are today, from single-celled organisms millions of years ago. What this means for the teleological argument is that there is no need to resort to a designer to explain complexity, parts working together, or orderliness, we can simply look to the mechanics of adaptation and to random chance. Richard Dawkins is a modern scholar who is a Darwinist and has developed Darwinian theory further. The following information is more than you will need for the exam. However, the material can be used to show that there is modern evidence to account for complexity. In his book, The Blind Watchmaker, the analogy of course borrowed from Paley, Dawkins outlines firstly how natural selection can operate on a genetic level. His point, like Darwin's, is that complexity can arise without the need to resort to a cosmic designer. He refers to random mutations and to cumulative selection to make his point. Dawkins makes the point that complexity can arise by a random chance alone. He uses an example of a computer program he developed called the Weasel Program. This idea was adapted from a challenge to the teleological argument, which says that given infinite time and a group of monkeys with typewriters, they could produce the works of Shakespeare through randomly bashing the keys. This suggests, of course, 
that the universe could have come about by a random chance with no need for a designer. Dawkins' weasel programme simplifies this example. Dawkins takes the sentence from Shakespeare, methinks it is like a weasel, which takes 26 letters and a space bar. He points out that if we'd have one monkey who could randomly type any combination of letters, it would take time, but eventually he would, by chance, type this sentence. The number of combinations that Daw Dawkins worked out was 10 to the power of 40. If we apply cumulative selection by letting the computer learn from previous attempts, the process is actually quicker. It is 43 generations. Dawkins demonstrates the same thing with his Biomorphs computer program, where he has some simple two-dimensional line drawings, but at random the computer mutates these drawings by extending or adding or subtracting lines. The images gradually became more and more complex until they were reminiscent of life forms that are actually existent. Dawkins argues that if we combine random mutation and cumulative selection, whereby successive additions add to each other based on their success within the environment, then complexity is easily explained without the need for a designer. Using the example of the eye, he says that we can see that minor adjustments successively made can make move such an item from basic sensing of light and dark to the complex eye we see in humans today. Dawkins points to the existence of lower species that have these simpler versions of the eye exist in nature now. All of this means that Dawkins rejects the need for postulating the existence of a designer based on the existence of complexity in nature. This can be accounted for without the need for a divine designer, but purely with reference to natural laws outlined initially by Darwin and developed by scholars like Dawkins.